Back to the telephones. Here is Jim in McLean, Virginia. Is was would this be former Congressman Jim Coyne? Yes. Hello, Kojo. Thank you very much for your call. Well, I I thought I'd provide a little bit of a historical perspective on some of the role of Congress and uh, and uh, uh, computers. Uh, back in 1982, I uh, set up the first email system for for folks' constituents to contact their congressman 33 years ago. So I, I heard a comment earlier that Congress was a little slow to embrace uh, new technology, but we, we did our best back in the early 80s to open up. Uh, and, it, and it was really interesting to see how, uh, how people were eager to be able to get away from snail mail and use a more modern way of communicating to government. How did that work out for you? Well, I, I uh, found it very interesting. I, I, I was a bit of I was been a businessman, and I, I had been very interested in computer technology. And uh, of course, in those days, um, you know, the, the the hurdle to use email was a lot higher than it is today. I mean, you had to mm-hmm. use uh, a telephone link, and you had to put your phone into a special adapter, and, and it was a lot more complicated. So. Needless to say, not every constituent in the congressional district had the accessibility to do it. But we had probably three or four hundred, I guess it was the the geeks of 1982, who kind of leaped at the opportunity to use the nascent email capability of a company called CompuServe. And uh, we we set up a system so that they could uh, use get a, have a separate uh, password or address so that they could just send in a, a query and, and then hopefully we could pass it on to some other part of government. Uh, the vision was that we would be able to just electronically send the constituents' inquiry off to you know, Social Security or you know wherever, but typically we had to print them out and send them to the other part of government to make sure they got the message. But it was nice for me to be able to communicate instantaneously uh, with people, and it was, it was an, uh, you know, I, I think it was a, a many of the constituents found it very useful. How widespread was the response to it? How many people communicated with you on a regular basis? Well, on a regular basis, only about 50, but I think we probably had a total of, when I say regular, on a daily basis, but there were probably, oh, maybe as many as eight or 900 who, during the course of uh, my congressional term, used it. Uh, it was, it was uh, you know, most people didn't know what email was in, in, in the early 80s, but it was something that, uh, you know, quickly became um, attractive to a lot of people who were start because you know pro- personal computers were just getting started at that time in very uh, early 80s. I and mean, this was before the PC and the and the Apple had gotten much widespread distribution. But uh, it was it was a eager thing, and, and of course the typical uh, inquiry would be something about technology. And, and I was very interested in technology issues and especially the whole concept of how to get in toward a, what we now call today e-government, uh, you know, having... I was about to say there was, no, there was no Thomas back then. How did people access information about Congress back then? Well, I mean, the, the, you had to use... Uh, in, the, in those days, uh, we had what were called uh, constituent management systems in our offices, which were in-house uh, systems that we would use to, to transpose uh, letters uh, or faxes from our, you know, the, the fax was the big new technology then, and we would get letters and faxes, and then we would input the data into these big correspondence management systems. But it was a very laborious and uh, inefficient system, and most of the computer computers were uh, very primitive computers. In fact, most of the offices used a timeshare system, and it, it was uh, billed out at so many dollars per for megabytes of, or, or kilobytes in those days of data. And uh, we opened up the system to every member of Congress. And when I, I had used it for, I set it up for my office for about three months. And then I told the rest of the members of Congress it, you know, how to do it with uh, CompuServe. And I think in the first year, we probably had maybe 80 members of Congress who embraced okay. it to some degree or another. And within, of course, within a few years, every member of Congress was using email. I'm so glad you called because we were having a conversation in the break between the segments about what is the history of all of this. And so we got former Congressman Jim Coy, Democrat of Pennsylvania, who the called Republican, former... Republican, 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 I'm sorry, Republican of Pennsylvania, former president of the National Air Transportation Association, correct? 
That's right. That's exactly right. And interesting, I should also point out, after I left Congress, I went to work at the White House, and I happened to get to become uh, familiar with a company called Radio Shack. And one day I, I <laughs> had a meeting at the White House, and the chairman of Radio Shack at that time, a man named John Roach, brought along something called a little portable TRS. I think it was a TRS-80 or maybe 100. It was a little tiny portable laptop with a, maybe 8,000 bytes of capacity. And, and I said, well, I have to show this to the president. And I took it into the Oval Office with Mr. Roach, and we showed him this little portable computer. And, in fact, I, I uh, had programmed a little bit thing in it for, to, to play Hail to the Chief for the president. And it was the first <laughs> time the computer was ever in the Oval Office. So I've been playing my small very small part in helping to advance uh, electronic government. Hey, Congressman Cohen, thank you very much for your call.